Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm Peggy. And I'm Amanda. And this is the Junction Fiber Mill Mill Cast. Episode 31. 31. I think. 31. Yeah. 31. I think we were both laughing because, you know, we're just doing these last minute. This, this, this. There's going to be some and then, technical difficulty. Right, I yes. just feel it today. And oh, I'm, no, I'm nervous. Oh, no, no, no. Stay nervous. positive. Okay. There's just so yeah. many things. We're, the more we do this, the more like one off things that could go wrong that like yeah. fill your brain with like, Yeah, the oh. things you didn't know go, could go wrong. So do. this is take one. And if you're seeing this, <laughs> hurrah, we're on hurrah. the other side That's of it. That's a good it. way to look at it. Yeah. Aren't we lucky? Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. how was your weekend? It was great. Yeah, it was, it was terrific. Yeah, we um, were at the farmers market for Savage yep, that Park was our, farm. this is our last farmers market for the farm oh, until really? the fall. Nice. Um, and it was a good crowd. It was Dartmouth graduation weekend, so yes, a lot of out of towners uh, popping around. And um, yeah, I arrived at like nine o'clock, right when it opened, and it was already very hopping. Right, we had a little bit of rain, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, okay, it nice. was the, the weather was good. The crowds were good. Um, the food there is always very good. Oh, it's fantastic. There's yeah. one stand in particular that, like, the line forms at, what, 8.30. People are, like, around the Oh, is this a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Although, uh, the bakery right next to me also gets a line going oh, really? pretty quick. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's so delicious. Um, yeah, so I had a great week, and my only frustration is that um, uh, last week I showed you the raised beds that Todd made for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Uh, my raised beds don't look any different. It's like we've had mm-hmm. so much rain and cool weather. Same. Things aren't growing. Yeah, it, they will, because right, the soil now has like a lot of yeah, moisture. Yeah, a lot of moisture. It, although yeah. it's supposed to rain most of this week as well. Right, and so. I think today is going to get warm and then cool off a little bit. So anyway, we needed to whining, get the weather report in there. about my garden. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, it was a good weekend. How about you? Uh, well, my weekend was great, and it felt actually super long because I kind of consider Wednesday through Friday <laughs> to be part of my weekend, even though I was here more hours than normal. And I'll tell you why. My husband, Cody, lovely man that he is, yes. took our daughter with him to the Midwest to pay visits to his mom and dad. Yeah. And uh, so I had the house kind of to myself. I had all the animals to take care of, right. but it was glorious. So I did a lot of reading on my porch. Okay. I finished a book. I did some knitting. Good book? Uh, it was very good. It was a George Saunders, I think it's called A Swim in the Pond in the in the Rain. It's like uh, the book version of his Russian Lit class, which oh, wow. was very good. Wow. Uh, and now I'm on to the Overstory, or Overstory by Richard Powers. So. Oh, this is the one about uh, trees? Yeah, it's, it seems to, I'm, I'm just like a couple chapters yeah. in, and it's sort of loosely around trees. Right, right, I got, right, right. That was technically right. a book. My friend Maggie raved about it. I yeah. tried. I don't know why it didn't stick for me. So far, I love it. Good, I've just Good. I've been in a reading mood, but that kind of impedes on my knitting time, because it's sort of a reading or knitting thing, and I, I can't do the audiobooks. Oh, really? Not for fiction. I just love reading. Um, okay. So, okay. nonfiction, I can do it. Um, but anyway. Interesting. Interesting. I'm mostly like a knitter. Who watches television while knits so oh yeah I, I can't unless it's golf i just don't care that much that's the thing you know, well, there's like very few things on the screen i actually care about so right. i'm i'm there with a person usually okay. cody yeah but then when he's gone i knit or i um i read i don't knit so my, my audio book to knit to right now is demon copperhead and it, oh, it's taken me it? a long uh it's very good okay she, um Barbara Kingsolver, I, yeah. I think. I, I hope that right. got that right. It's a it's a very popular book. Yeah. And on audio as well. Um, I'm just taking a long time to get through it just because life has been busy. Yeah. But I'm enjoying the story. My issue, so I would love to do more like in the evening audiobook and knitting. My problem is it feels so separate from Cody and we yeah, like it's to very have anti- time. Yeah, it's anti So no the question. only time I get is like this maybe hour, right. half hour at the end of the day. That's when I knit, and so it's like I could do that, but then I'm off like um, in my own world. And yep. We still love each other. Yeah, so no, no, I don't. I'm not saying you and Todd. Yeah, don't, no, I but. don't do audio books sitting next to Todd. It's weird, and, right? Unless he is like doing a deep dive into yeah. some lengthy article. Yeah, if Cody no. was like, he, yeah, the thing is we want to spend time together, but it's, it's this constant ad odds where we I, both want to read, yep. but we both want to spend time together, so we end yeah. up watching TV. Right. And he doesn't have a knitting, you know, hobby. I, right. I, he, he has many times expressed that he wants me to teach him to knit. Yeah. Because he has a similar work ethic, which... I reckon a lot of knitters have, or we yeah. can't just sit. No, no, no. You want to always feel productive. <laughs> so that's what yeah. the knitting is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and that's what the audiobooks. Yep. Need yep. a book and you're knit a whole doing sweater. Doing something. Right. So, anyways, I think it would it would help him to have knitting. But again, then we're still we're still not reading. Yeah. So I have to I have to be honest with you. Todd has never expressed an interest in learning to hand knit. Really? Nah. 
machine knitting. He wants to do yeah, that. Yeah, he'll, he'll help out with the machine knitting, which we make these felted hats. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. How about, I'd love to hear, uh, I imagine oh. our audience is primarily female, but yeah, I think that's a... uh, I'm curious, like, what your what your partners, like, are, are they also knitting? Does anyone have, like... A oh, husband a, or partner who knits. Oh, two two knitters in the yeah, a partner who knits, yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear it. Are there any households with two knitters in it? Yeah, and then gender gender be what it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, uh, I think he would like to, and I would like to see him knitting. But yeah, he just hasn't. Oh my gosh, I knew it. What happened? A tick. Oh my god. They're everywhere. Where did they let off of? My jeans, they just they appear. Oh, don't get me Sorry. started on the guys. We live. Actually, Leah, our employee, I think, was telling me because um, she lives in Thetford, which is just the next town up the road from us. She was saying that, and I don't know if this is true, but she claims most ticks in the world per not per capita, you know, like in the yeah. concert, they have the most ticks. And I think where we live in Norwich is like a close second. Yeah. And this is like a whole other side topic. It's it's pretty dead now, guys. But it's just, and this is a big one, so I'm less concerned about it. But like, uh, ticks are a problem. They are a huge problem. Yeah. And I found now that's like, it kind of is the only bad thing about summer up here. Summer yeah. here is an absolute spectacular. Heaven, yeah. But the ticks have made it like, it's yes. just you can't I went, go out I went for a hurrying. hike with my sister yesterday afternoon, and as, oh, as soon as I was done, I went straight into the house, brushed myself off, got in the shower. Yeah, it's that's what you have to do. Yeah. And now having a child, like, absolutely, she doesn't even know what they are. So, like, I have right. to, like, check no, you all have her to nooks check. and crannies. Right. And, but, like, not only that, <laughs> nooks and crannies, I have to yeah. put myself through the shower. But, like, before bedtime, our routine is, like, I need a shower first because then I'm going to – I'm still nursing her before bed. So, right. I don't want my ticks crawling onto her. So, uh, I need to be clean. She needs uh, – okay. Yeah, but anyway, okay. so there was a lot of ticks involved with my weekend, too, because we got out and we did some hiking. But oh, good. it's just, you know. But ticks are, ticks are horrible. Yeah, they are. They're, Ooh, they're, they're okay. bad. All yeah. right, moving on. Yeah, <laughs> moving on. Um, one of my favorite people came by the mill to, yes. to do a, a drop-off, right? Yes. Yeah. Kelly Adi. And we have Kelly Adi introducing herself right here. So I'm Kelly Adi, and my farm is Fernbridge Farm, and I am in Ferrisburg, Vermont. I have Shetland sheep. I've got a flock of 48 fine fleece Shetlands. Uh, I uh, primarily uh, sell my yarn at different festivals, uh, farmers markets, and I design patterns to make kits, uh, which I find is really popular for a lot of folks. People can find me uh, on my website, which is friendbridgefarm.com, and uh, on Instagram as friendbridgefarm as well. Are you wearing your sheep? I am. Yeah, this is actually a fiber. Um, this is yarn that you guys spun for me, and I dyed, and it's an Amy Christopher's Felix pullover. She's lovely. She's lovely. She's and she has her. lovely fleece, and she's a star custom processing customer, and I'll yeah. tell you why. Oh. She came in. We were very busy. We're always very busy, folks. She had all of her fleece. First of all, immaculate. Right. She knows how to skirt, so yeah. she comes here with this gorgeous fleece. It's all in like bags as we've asked one bag per job so yep. it's all full yep. all, they're all tied they're all ready to be put on our scale she comes with her order form printed off all the you know everything on there figured right. she was in and out in five minutes well she's a busy woman and she had a long drive her farm by the way is far, uh, fern bridge farm yes um and and she's gotten very serious about Chetland. Yes, and um, she's she's lovely, worked really hard place. to keep um, getting the the fiber finer and finer. It's really yeah. There's yeah. such a big range with it, Shetland. With Shetland, there's uh, a huge people, range. When we opened the mill, we learned this. There was big a lot time. of folks coming to us saying we have, we raise fine Shetland. Right. Um, so that's apparently its own thing, and Kelly Adi does that it's as well. Exactly so, what Kelly does. Beautiful She's stuff. terrific. She's terrific, and been very helpful to us. Yes, so. she has. Um, we have a little news. It's, it's just a little news. Yeah, a little news. Now, we have to say, uh, one of our favorite um, uh, fiber festivals is the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, which we will be at again. It's September. It's like our home team festival. Home team, and it's a, it, it's in Tunbridge. Yeah. Terrific uh, setting. Room. It's almost always got the great fall colors. It's September 30th and October 1st this coming year. Yes. And we look forward to being there. Yes, we will be there, and that is, I think, our next real event. Yes, yes. Which is wild. That, I mean, we've got our, a, a lot going on this summer, but no right, the, fiber festival. Our next event. fiber festival will, will be the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, which we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we're thrilled to be at. But, but. <laughs> we have this giant yeah. date on our calendar yeah. now that we are excited to say. Are you sure we yeah, say it together? Yeah. We got into, into Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck. Yes. 
us. We applied and we've been told it can be really hard to get in. We weren't hearing, we weren't hearing, so we're just kind of we assuming fact, we're like, not getting in. Yeah, we were. Th- we heard from other people that they, they had gotten got in. in we're like, we got in a month ago. So we're, yeah, we're we like, were, we're, I, I was just like, yeah, there's no way. And then Labor Day weekend, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Day weekend, got the email, and I was like, oh my God, we're into Rhinebeck. Yes. Now, Rhinebeck is the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival, but it's... Oh, you know, most people refer to it as Rhinebeck because that's where it's held in Dutchess yeah. County. Yep. And it's a big deal. Yeah, we went last year, Cody, Maven, and, right. and our friend Isaac, just to check it out and do some little research as civilians. Constant, yeah. Yeah, it was busy. It was all of our friends were there. All of the people you hear about, the stars were there walking around. It was very cool. They had a lot of like beautiful. Like people wearing their absolute oh, fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Rhinebeck sweaters are a thing. If you've yeah. ever heard that, that's like the sweaters that people are knitting to right. wear to Rhinebeck. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a future episode. But yeah, it's yeah. a big deal. And uh, it's it's notoriously, I think, difficult to get in as a vendor. Right. And so this was our first year we applied and we were feeling like it could go either way. Right. But it's huge for our business to be able to get Absolutely. into Rhinebeck. Absolutely. And it's, it's a little daunting because yes. here we are uh, we're already into June and we have lots of custom processing to do four months till Rhinebeck four months till Rhinebeck and we reached out to one vendor who has done who's been a vendor for a very long time and I, I just said to her based on Vermont how many much more do we need to like have Vermont, to be able, sheep and wolf, right Vermont Wolver, sheep and wool I yeah. don't need to know your numbers don't tell me what you your actual sales are but how much more business do you do at Rhinebeck than you do at Vermont Sheep and Wool? And she came back and she said about six times. This is a person who I remember her quoting in the past. It literally pays the bills for the farm, this festival for her. This is like, she does many other festivals, but this right. was the one. And yeah. so for us, we're like, oh boy. So, you know, we kind of thought with uh, Vogue that we were going to get totally trampled too. And right, that Vogue we Knitting came Live. Out of and that, Vogue yeah. With more inventory. Like, we, we really stocked up and we had some. <laughs> so. <laughs> we we, uh, we, t- we took so much yarn down to New York for the Vogue Knitting Live. It was Live. a little wild. It was, it was ridiculous. But if, if, if those numbers are anywhere close to right, we basically have to have about 400 pounds of yarn ready for Rhinebeck. Yeah, which most of it will be like, our making tracks. Right. So we're really thinking, and, and not only that, but we have custom processing orders that people really need for Rhinebeck, and some of them are pretty big yeah. as well. So we are sort of thinking, how can how we... How are we going to do this? Yeah, and like praying to the equipment gods to... Yeah, we need the equipment gods to be on our side, and fortunately... Both uh, Emma and Leah are well up the the learning curve, yes. uh, especially around the spinner. And this this the the key to this is to we got to keep the spinner spinning. Yeah, at our mill currently, that's the bottleneck. So we we just kind of have to always have it spinning. And um, right. yeah, and, and which means um, some staggered hours. Yeah, hopefully um, increasing the like total amount of time that it's running. It yep. means doing a lot of dyeing to yep. get the making tracks ready. Yep. And just you and I need to sit down and plan, like, how can we realistically do this? Yeah, how, how are we going to pull this off? And it's a r- really good problem to have. Oh, it's a great so, problem to have, but it, it definitely has me gnashing my teeth a little bit. Yeah. I, I was, uh, this weekend at one point, um, I, I was making a grid <laughs> of trying to figure out it, if we wanted to try and do X amount of, say, making tracks in a week, how how do we pull that off? And, you know, doing the schedules, I didn't get out my, you know, colored pencils, but I was... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was sort of heading towards there um but we'll, we'll figure it out we'll do the best we can that's right yeah and it'll be a fun weekend either way and we we know that some of you watching are going to be at Rhinebeck you know so. it just made me think of what? Yeah, so um at, at the Norwich Farmers Market right next to us is one of the most popular bakers uh-huh and you can always judge how how well is the Norwich Farmers Market doing because they sell out yeah and so it's what time do they sell yeah out? did they sell out at <laughs> noon that goes from nine to to one and if it didn't sell out then it was a slow crowd but they almost always sell out yeah and then they are they're kind of there you know they're you're not supposed to leave until and that's true of fiber festivals you're not supposed to leave until the festival is over regardless of whether or not you sold out so these guys these these bakers they're kind of there just chit-chatting with people because they're sold out yeah wow. and that's what we'll you know if we sell out 
We sell out. We sell it's out. It's great. It's fun to go there even if you're not. Uh, I haven't been. Sell, Never, I, yeah. No, I've, I've been to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, which okay. I think is on par in terms of size. Um, but anyway, it we should will, be very fun and, yeah, and a little terrifying. Yeah, um, it'll be fine. I mean, yeah. I'm way less scared of this than I am of like Vogue Knitting Live. Yeah, Vogue Navigating Knitting Navigating New York City as a yeah. sort of Speaking logistical of which, challenge. We, we, I, I'm, I'm going to do business right in the middle of this millcast. We should get housing locked up. Yes. For vo- I will say for, I had for, no problem booking it two weeks in advance last year. I know but that, but that's that's testing fate. Yeah, it's on my list. Okay, I know, but your okay. list is like pages and pages. Yeah, is well, it on the fifth page or the first page? It's on the, it's on the first page. <laughs> it's on the first page. Yeah, we'll get yeah, housing locked we'll up. We'll get some housing locked up. Okay. It's not gonna. Be, don't worry about it. The housing's gonna be fine. I, I, I yeah, I, um, yeah, I worry. I, you know what? I should also say because I'm not going to be in a, the next millcast. I'm, mm. I'm also headed to. So we got Ryan back. Yes. I got to mention what I'm doing next week. Tell everyone. So I'm flying to Chicago with, and I've already shipped sample yarns to go to H&H America at the um, Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, Illinois. And it's um, a wholesale event for all things fiber, like embroidery yarns, or embroidery, embroidery needles, and yarn and crocheting. and. There's quite a few um, uh, yarn manufacturers of our yeah. size who are going to be there, and it's hoping to engage with um, yarn shops to see if they want to carry making tracks in their yarn shop. And of course, now I'm like, careful what you wish for. What if the answer is yes? So we have Rhinebeck and wholesalers and all the custom processing. We need a midnight. We'll need a midnight shift. Yeah. Well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All great Can, problems to have. Yeah. It, it definitely has me a little anxious. Yeah. I mean, I could just say, uh, "Nice to meet you, yarn shop." Sign I'm, up for someday. So, so, <laughs> sign up for January. After no, we'll, Rhinebeck, we'll let you know. Yeah, we'll 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 figure something out. We'll, yeah, we'll I think it's also out. fine. It's a, again, it's a great position to be in, and. It'll be all right. We're checking it out. We're learning. Yeah, we are learning. And you're watching us learn on, yeah, the, in on the go. Time. In real time. Truly so, in real time. And I will say, like, another challenge that, you know, again, speaking sort of off the cuff here is making tracks is not the be-all, end-all for why we got into this Correct. mill. So there is a real um, balance between doing the, you know, the beautiful, colorful dye work that we love doing for making tracks, but also wanting to support the local sheep farmers right. and get you know, selfishly really get my hands in a lot of different type of fiber in a right. given week. Right. It is such a joy to get some of these different fleeces yeah. in and from one week you're yeah. doing Shetland and the next week you're doing Cormo and yeah. Um, yeah. so even if making tracks could take up the entire timeline of what we're doing in this mill, it's not necessarily what I want to be doing no, the whole time. So it's, there's a real balance. Right. And, and we've talked about this. We have a new spinner coming yes. um, in November, which will be a game changer November-ish. for us. November-ish. November-ish. It's, uh, it's coming from Italy. It'll so, be here yeah. in one year. June. <laughs> no, don't say that. Oh, I fully believe that. I think we will go to Italy in November. It will get on, uh, it'll get overseas at some point. Our, our plans are to go to Italy and not until November. Okay. That, that piece of equipment is going to be here in White River Junction by the end of December. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta, you gotta be positive here. Mark Pegg's words. Yeah. I bet you it'll be to the day on our three year anniversary. We'll be loading in in February. It'll be a snowstorm. Hey, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. It'll happen though. So with our small mill of eight bobbins, we've been very busy. We are always very busy. Yeah, this and is here's true. what we've been doing. Yeah, let's, uh, let's I'll start cover. with uh, yeah. the making tracks as we were just talking about it. This is Creamsicle. Yeah. Uh, I think, was it Vicky that died yep. this one? Yep. Um, so this is, we we kind of have been honing in on the perfect recipe for this one. I think this is a really good iteration. It is. It's, it's less yellow than the, the previous less one. less orangey, I think, too. Okay. I, st- I think we're, our goal is to still make it a little bit paler. A little paler, yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, it's coming into creamsicle season here. Yeah, so it's fun. So this is really lovely and would make, like... And, it, and it's going to pair beautifully with, with purples and blues as an accent. It's, yeah. Yeah, so fun. So we have yeah. creamsicle. Yeah, and I've got this. I We did not hank this because um, it's still damp. I rinsed oh, it this it's morning. Oh, so gorgeous. This is pure Cormo. It's immaculate. Cormo is um, very crimpy, 
very soft, so the micron count, which is the diameter of the actual fiber, is pretty much on the low side. <coughs> so the end result is a unbelievably squishy, yeah, it's soft, like it's like a close sorry. cousin to like a, a merino or right. something like that. So Corydale is a, not quite as soft, uh, and this is immaculate. There isn't a speck. I was about to say there is barely a speck of which is um, hard. The end. It's hard yeah. to keep those fine yeah. fleeces the, the, uh, free of the end. Right. The one challenge about Cormo is it it comes with a lot of lanolin. Um, like yep. like all the other Cormo, we had to give this extra wash. And so when you're washing out that lanolin, say somebody brings in 13 pounds, when you scour it, it usually goes down to about 10 pounds. This, this went down a little bit further, cause, just because the, the animal creates so much lanolin. Yep. Um, but it's exquisite. The other thing about Cormo, it, when it's white Cormo, it's a bright white. It's a, such a nice color. Yeah, it's not, it's not really creamy white like a lot of uh, sheep's whites are. The Cormo is a bright white, so anyway. Gorgeous. Yeah, and this is another example where I'm like going, you sure you want it all back? You, you want to leave a little here? Anyway, <laughs> gorgeous. And then this, we literally just plied this morning. We've been busy already today. Yeah, we yeah. have. This is some Shetland, again, sort of in the fine Shetland area. But yeah. this is uh, Shetland from a farm in Norwich. They're called Bosca Verde Farm. And this is sort of something new we're trying where this person in particular didn't um, need all of the finished yarn back. Right. So it's a custom processing order, but they didn't want all of the yarn themselves. So we're actually buying half of it. Right. So we're going to have it available for sale as farm fresh yarn. So this is also really exciting. It's a first three ply that we have yeah, had to offer yeah. uh, for sale. So this is not going to be on our site by the time I post uh, this mill cast, but look out for it soon. Um, we'll have it in the newsletter. We'll have it in the newsletter, which yeah. we should talk about in a sec. But yeah, this is a uh, Shetland from Norwich. Literally, my, the town I live in, right down the road. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, farm fresh yarn. So really nice. Look out for that very soon. And speaking yeah. of the newsletter, we just wanted to put a plug. Yeah, if you're Make not subscribing, uh, subscribe. Yeah, it's um, it's through our website. There's a if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a sign up link. And if you've never placed, um, I think it's your first order you get 10% off with the code that you'll receive from signing up. Yeah. Um, so thank you. And we don't inundate you. We, we only yeah. send it out when there's newsworthy things. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll tell you about our events and, and all that stuff. So yeah. it's a great place to be. Yeah. Hey, so this morning in the inbox, we had the most delightful email oh, from yes. Stephen. Stephen, what? You're so good to your mom. <laughs> Take a look at this. Yes. Stephen... Great job. Uh, he used our late October Making Tracks yarn to knit this for his mom. It is the slip stitch pattern, pattern from Green Mountain Spinnery. Just, Fabulous. Uh, from down in Putney. So Your mom looks great in it. Yes, and thank you for sending us photos. Yeah. We love to get them. And if you send yeah. us them, we might share them on the Millcast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so speaking of knitting, yes. you don't have anything. No, but I will talk about what oh, I'm yeah, wearing. Yeah, what, are, yeah, what are you wearing? This is the Lindell Shawl, I think it's called, S-J-A-L-L by she Ona is so creative. Walton. And it is knit in our Valley Fog making mm -hmm. tracks along with our Montreal and Cheviot in the green. green. So we have both of those yarns in stock. I think this is the half version. Yep, so, exactly. Uh, it's a, it is very cozy. The yarn is just feels lovely. Um, yeah. I didn't knit this. Ona, the pattern designer, knit this and dropped it off with us. But I didn't have anything calling out to me in my wardrobe. And furthermore, I forgot even my knitting at home today. So I thought I would throw on something to talk about. So this is it. It's lovely. Tell us what you're knitting. I'm so excited to see this. I, I knew at the moment that you said the name of that pattern, I was like, uh-oh. What's the name of the pattern I'm doing? You're gonna remember. Is so, this the Sold Dots now? Yep, it is. So Boylan Networks. So there's the the chart. Okay. There's the there's the the uh, the neck, and it just so you actually go like this. I didn't get a ton done, but I got enough going. So. Ooh, look at those colors. So what I did. So you're doing making tracks for the main color. Uh, no. Oh. Nope. The main color is this. Back is going to be the, 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 the gray. Oh, interesting. So what I did was, I, this is a lookout ledge, and, and we've had people talk about this before. I could see when I went to go skein wind it that one end was very different than so the other end. you put it like in a ball? Or right. Take, yep. So I deliberately picked the end that had this very um, marled section yep. to be the neck, 
and then it very quickly got to this solid purple. Yep. And then I have the silver, which is Savage Heart Farms gray. And then I have Aurora Borealis is that little accent of the very blue. Wow. And then I have, um, I think it's leaf peeping. And I'm not sure that I like the orange, but I'm gonna give it a little more of a this go. This is fun. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. And then the orange is gonna go with, uh, do, 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 the purple for a while the and then the light. gray then what's going to happen is the body will take over and it'll be gray with the aurora borealis okay. and the lookout ledge okay. accented throughout the rest of the body wow okay i know it's it's a, it's a departure it's color yes um and, and I, we'll is see. this for you oh yeah nice very cool uh, yeah i gotta <laughs> yeah it is for me yeah yeah it is um very easy the instructions were incredibly clear it looks hard when you look at it oh no well it's stranded knitting yeah i just there's a lot going on when you see it it looks very impressive well and i i'm trying to you know the whole thing with stranded knitting is trying to make sure you're staying loose yep i know that when i uh, block it and i i'll gently steam it that yep. my that little bit of puckering will go away i'm i'm pretty confident that it's it's going to be loose enough I'm on the fence about the orange, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I think it's really fun. I think you should Well, I think it. that if I had done a pale yellow, yeah. it would have also been good, but I'm just going to keep moving forward. Very fun. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is one, it has short sleeves and it's cropped, so it shouldn't take terribly long yep. to do. Well, other than the stranded. So how do you hold yeah. your yarn when you're knitting stranded? I have one in each hand. Okay. Um, and somewhere along the way, I don't know how I ran into this tip. In the past when I was doing stranded, I used to set it down. You know, if you're if you're uh, carrying it for like more than three stitches before you're gonna use that color again, you're supposed to twist it in the back so it so that you don't have, you know, great long big floats. long floats. And what I used to do, set it down, twist it, pick it back up. I've literally never done that, but I should do so it. So <laughs> instead, there's a tip where you can put your needle down here and, and and do the stitch and it's automatically bringing the float okay. tying it up i'm being so inarticulate about it but it's genius and it doesn't matter there's a way so to do it for each one you don't have to set your yarn you don't have to set you don't have to set you don't have to do any setting down and twisting okay it's really it's a game changer in terms of keep going keep going yeah i've sort yeah. of set stranded knitting aside for the time being because i know i need to level up my skills because i've just i've always just sort of been like Oh, I'll just follow the chart willy-nilly without thinking about floats. And then when I made it, uh, Maeve's little sweater, like, I noticed, like, for her, it's tough because she gets her little finger stuck in it and uh, the sleeve and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, oh, she's I getting I caught in get, the floats in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I need yeah. to get better at uh, handling floats before I tackle it. I, 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 I will show you this little tip. Not, okay. Not right now. Yeah. But I'll show you this little tip. It's so easy. Okay. You could do it every other stitch if you wanted. All right. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you'll have to show me. Um. And it, well, has, and it so does have short rows so that, you know, you, you know, the shoulders, everybody seems to be doing um, short rows to, you know, compensate. It makes so much sense. Totally. Like, yeah, I really but only in the, like, am I right? Like only in the last five years? What the hell? When my mother was knitting, did, didn't well, someone this, know short rows? Yeah, this sweater that I'm knitting doesn't have it. And I realized only now, you always should check the Ravelry comments because my the ribbed sweater doesn't have the short rows and that's part of it where it puckers right, it, up. It I'm like, why would you knit a sweater that's exactly the same front and back? I mean, I, I'm, you know, certainly less curvy than some, but like it just doesn't fit right. the form uh, of right. a human. Can you do short rows with a ribbing? People did apparently. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not really sure how they did it, but well, with the anyways, German short row, it doesn't show up and yeah. You know, it's on Ravelry. Other people are adding short rows. Yeah. Wish I would have seen it. Oh well. Oh, well. I haven't blocked my rib. Have you blocked yours yet? No, I'm I'm working on sleeves first. Oh, okay. I'm about I've gotten to the decreases in the sleeves. It oh, has okay. you go 20 centimeters, and then you start to decrease. So okay. I'm there. It's okay. coming along. I'm getting a little bored, but I haven't figured out what my next project is. And when oh. I do, I will probably jump ship and put it aside for a while. <laughs> the orphan, the orphan sweater. Well, the, I found out I'm not alone in this. This when I also read the Ravelry comments, everyone's like, "Yeah, I put it down, picked it up, put it down, picked it up." It's just too much two by two ribbing. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, the whole I, dang sweater is a two by two rib. I'm. You like it? I like. I like the ribbing. I'm. I'm I, what, what was I going to say? I like to finish a project before starting another. Very rarely <laughs> do I have more than one thing going. I used to be that way. Now, now yeah. I just I, otherwise I'm not going to knit if I don't like it. Yeah, there and is, I always want to knit. Yeah, there is a vest that I started for myself 
five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's still in the same bag. And, and I, I, I hear it sometimes when I walk into the room, I hear it saying, well, what about me? That's probably the only one I can say right now that's just <laughs> sitting there going, and even if I tried to start it now, I'd be totally lost because it has a, yeah. a, a kind of a Gansey pattern in it. It's like a, Cody wants me so badly to add pockets to something I made him. And I think I gave away the yarn. I had like an extra skein and I, I gave it away when I cleared stash. So uh -oh. I had to like find a different yarn. And yeah. it's, it is like we call it the cable monster. It is like this very cable Brooklyn tweed cardigan pattern and it's beautiful but he really wants pockets and I just cannot bring myself to like it's like that project is done yeah I'm done next time I know next time although it took a million years so yeah well that doesn't mean next time is anytime soon <laughs> learn to knit yourself <laughs> there you <Husbands. laughs> go yikes <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Well, uh, we've got a lot to do because yeah. we're, we're just sitting here procrastinating and we got to get started on yeah, Rhinebeck. Get, Rhinebeck. We're going to uh, crack the whip on Rhinebeck. ourselves. Rhinebeck. self graduation here. Oh my um, gosh. Uh, off to Chicago, so you, you'll figure out a mill cast without me. Yeah. Yep. I will. Okay. Uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right. All right. Bye, Bye folks. Guys. Thanks for tuning in.